Hey, what's up guys? Uh, so this is, obviously we've already reviewed the lunchbox, uh, Rick and I, if you haven't seen that, go watch that. Uh, we were it long ago, um, but this is, I wanted to, we've always talked about introducing Indian films to Americans and which ones we would introduce first and lunchbox was always one of our first ones. So I had a couple of my friends watch this film who've never seen an Indian film before and I've kind of spliced the reviews together, uh, and so you can see their thoughts of it. Um, so I hope you enjoy. Uh, let me know what you think and let me know which the next film we should have some Americans review down below. How are you guys? I mean, We're how good. is anybody? I mean, really? Yeah, surviving. <laughs> okay. <That's> Michelle. <laughs> And uh, Daniel. This is Zachary Andrew Charles Kieslich. Uh, he is my uh, best friend from childhood. And they, that's well, it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And this is your yeah. first Indian film you've ever seen, correct? Yeah, you know? not not one that wasn't like, you know, a co-production or yeah. not like... If you don't count Slumdog Millionaire, but that's... No, we don't. Oh, I started... Uh... Um, what was it called? The uh, Hindi. Um, uh, Hindi medium. I on my phone. Hindi medium. I started that today. Cause earphone. I because I, I was looking into after I watched the lunchbox. I was looking how this movie did really good, and so dang. Ah, oh, we medium. haven't even seen a Hindi medium. So, what did you think? If you uh, whoever wants to go first, just uh, your initial thoughts of your first ever. Indian film. I mean, I, I, I love all foreign films because I feel like they just allow themselves to take whatever time that they want mm -hmm. to let their characters come through. It's, it's, they revel in smaller moments a lot more than I think Western films do, uh, for the most part. And like those small moments are what are the reasons I, I like going to the films anyway. But I love that. It made me miss actually a time in Western films where, uh, in you know, back in the '70s, you'd have these familial romances and dramas that were simple and quiet and uh, a, with a great budget. And they don't really do that much anymore. Mm -hmm. It seems. No, like the the quality, the actual like cinematography and quality of the film was so beautiful, mm -hmm. and I think we. Yeah, right. I haven't seen a film that looks like that in a long time that had the pace that this did. Like, watching the the guy bring the lunch boxes and just put them on every single desk, I think he did that, like, three times. Yeah. Is so slow. And for some reason, <sighs> is he going to get the same one? Like, it's so <laughs> Yeah, I love it because it's, it, it's it, at first you're going, man, it's, as as when you're used to consuming western content you're like oh man it's just taking its time with with these moments and then by the third time that it's doing it you're now in the you're now in his shoes and here like you could see him here yeah. in the lunch boxes and waiting for it and you're waiting for him to see and now all of a sudden you're wanting to see the note as much as he is and that's the kind of patience that i think is missing in a lot of films uh, these days. So, did you like the film? It needed more white people. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I loved it. I thought it was yeah. really good. I thought it was. Um, I was. It was. It was funny, mm -hmm. but without like trying real hard to be funny. It was like very yeah. subtle, and yeah, it was. It reminded me of like, you know, just older movies that we like like Casablanca type movies where it's mm -hmm. like, we're not trying too hard to entertain. We're just going to tell a story and then entertain on the, in, in the process. Yeah. You know, I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I've been watching the, uh, chipmunk Alvin and the chipmunks four times in a row. So anything <laughs> is better than that. Uh, right now. It doesn't. He, beat, he had. Doesn't he has. Beat. He has two very young children. For for yeah. obviously nobody here that knows that. Um, uh, I have a, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. The one-year-old watched some of um, Lunchbox with me, and he liked it. I think. Oh, good. He just did it. And did you? Did you guys like the film? Oh, I loved it. 
I did. I really loved it. I, I really liked it. <laughs> uh-huh. My my North American little girl inside of me was like, Oh, why didn't they get together at the end? <laughs> like yeah, like I like I so appreciate the beauty of it. I understood like the the poetic nature of the quote and that they kept bringing it back and that's what it was all about, which is so beautiful. But like the girl that grew up on rom-coms was like, come on. Like you like there's that tiny part of you that's like, man, that's really beautiful. But gosh, I want my love actually. Yeah, I want my love actually. <laughs> where they're like, she opens the door and he's there and, and it's. Even like that, like just even yeah. at the end with that moment of them finally seeing, seeing each, each other, other as them for the first time. Yeah. Uh, but I also love that. I love when a film allows you to kind of uh, fill in the rest of the story. I think the thing that that show does in this movie does really beautifully is it leaves you with a feeling and a tone at the end that's mm-hmm. just like right where you want to be and when we turned it off we were getting ready for bed and i was like well what if he doesn't make it or like what if he opens the door what if like are they gonna go to bhutan like what's gonna happen let's talk about the the actors you've seen irfan in other stuff you saw probably in i'm guessing slumdog inception spider-man and jurassic world probably right and life of pi and life of pi yes um so what did what did you think of irfan He's a great actor, and I've only mm-hmm. known him, unfortunately, as, like, side character. Side character, the and Jurassic so, World owner, park park owner. He's either, he's like, either like a, a mean billionaire guy or, like, a mean scientist guy. Or he's some, like, just background character for the most part. And so mm-hmm. I recognize him, but I this is where I see him as, like, a main actor. And I thought even he was quiet most of the time, but he still... Was I loved his dry humor, like his sarcasm was hilarious, and without him trying, uh, I and then I started looking up more stuff about him because, and I he I know he died this year, and so I like, yeah. feel bad. Like I missed, and this guy's supposed to be like looking yeah, him up, like the best actor. You're fun. What did you think of uh, your fun con? The main guy. He's just so effortless. Just there's there's a beauty in. A lot of like older foreign actors that I see in, in in foreign films who there's just an unfussiness to everything. It's just like, and I know that's the character too. I get like emotional thinking about it. I think I, I you know, I worked on this show called The Band's Visit, mm-hmm. and that's based off of a Israeli Egyptian film. And the lead actor in that reminds me a lot of that too, where it's just this quiet stoicness of like carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders and trying with all your might not to show it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And like being able to just show a sliver or a crack in the tiniest eye movement or emotion or gosh, just the moment that like we paused the film because it broke our hearts and it was so cute was when he buys the painting for himself uh and <laughs> just holding it, on the, it on the subway and it's those little oh moments of you seeing this this man like crack open but it's so minute it's yeah so he tiny. does it with such a delicate touch that mm-hmm. it's i forget which actor said it or director but it's like an actor's job is not to push it all out it's to actually draw the audience to you and he's mm-hmm. like the epitome mm-hmm. of that and for the record he's the beautiful man like so like beautiful. like him being the old man i'm like come on yeah. you're even with those weird glasses they put on you you're gorgeous yeah man. it's like it's like yeah you know he's beautiful <laughs> yeah uh, like even with his glasses he's like you could tell man this guy's a beautiful gorgeous man. man gorgeous yeah. man. <laughs> He's, he's easily the most effortless actor i've ever seen in my life and that's the word that everybody that i've ever shown him to that's the word that they come up with it's just he's he d- it doesn't even look like he's trying. The, the, the other actor, who was the, basically his protege, uh, the guy he, he was training, what did you think about him? His name is Nawazuddin Nawaz Siddiqui. I really loved his I performance. Loved we, his performance. We, kept, we, we so desperately wanted everything to work out for the main guy that we kept going like, is he trying to screw him over? Like, is yeah. he like... Is he trying to steal something from him? Is he trying to get him fired? Like when he went into the office, 
I was like, oh my god, that guy totally is trying to get him fired. That is that douchebag of a guy. And then he's like the sweetest dude. Uh-huh. He was, was awesome. He was such a perfect yeah. foil too for for him because he brought all this like he was like this ball of energy that was the thing kind of cracking through the shell, you know, slowly, surely. And then him inviting him to his wedding is like the most heartbreaking, sad, like, yeah. Oh. Thing but world. even those first couple scenes, I think there's like three or four scenes where essentially all he says is good morning, sir. Yeah. You can see him getting more and more frustrated and more and more desperate just minutely, mm-hmm. but, but he's not, there's not like a huge shift, you know? It's so good. Every time he was on the screen, he made he was annoying. <laughs> In the beginning, he was uh-huh. hilariously annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, he's it was just another good actor. I, I like what you said about him because I think it it defines the movie uh, just specifically. Is that it was everything was effortlessly. Yeah. Like it was just it was almost like a documentary, mm-hmm. but more entertaining and <laughs> not not boring but more of a more it was just everything was more genuine and 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 real and like him because he he wasn't trying to sell the jokes mm-hmm. uh she got her name I yeah the the, the 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 one that was making the food yeah that was making food she i mean i thought she did really well and i thought yes. she, she was really good and i was i say everybody like even though her husband who Mm-hmm. Kind of, can we say bad words on this? Yes, one? absolutely. He was a dick, but he without trying, like he wasn't like, yeah, like trying to be, yeah. But like he, he for being for like, being a a hated character, he did a really good job at at, at not. Like you didn't know he was pl- having an affair. They never said anything. No, that's the other thing with the movie. They never really said anything. Mm-hmm. You just picked it up. Like they, like most American movies, they think the audience is stupid, and so yeah. they. They sell every, especially nowadays. Mm-hmm. I feel like they they try too hard to to get you on in the joke or on in the the plot without us, you know, trying to figure it out ourselves. Yeah, this movie did with just being a simple kind of romantic comedy. He like a crazy major deal in India, and we just don't know him. He, in my opinion, one of the greatest actors I've ever seen. But what you saw is not who he normally plays. He's normally. A psychopathic villain. <laughs> uh, so makes sense to me. So yeah. makes sense. Yeah, he uh, he's one of my favorite actors. He uh, like he's played by like there's this film um, by the same writer, but it's obviously a very different tone. Uh, it's called Gangs of Wasipur, which is basically you about this. I need yeah, to see it. Five and a half hours uh, film, um, <laughs> but he ba- it's like a Godfather lineage story, and he's one of them, and so he's. <laughs> murdering people left and right. Uh, and so it's this it's big ordeal, but that's what he's known for is playing the, um, the bad guy or the villain or the, the, the psychopath. And so like seeing him in this role where he's so innocent and, and like childlike almost at times, it just shows you how, how great of an actor he is because he's known as one of the best actors in India. Um, that makes sense that to makes me. It's sense. Also, it also totally makes sense to me now like why there was this tiny little bit of us that was going like, oh no, is this guy going to screw him over in yeah. some way? Even though he ends up not doing it. It's yeah. like, has that energy where you're like, that kind of amazing, like manic energy where you feel like it could turn into something but else on a dime. That's like, casting is everything. Like there, it's in yeah. the writing, but that's also just perfect casting. Yeah, so great. Yeah. What did you think what, happened at yeah. the end? <laughs> I, not what I wanted. Not what I thought was gonna happen. Uh, what, where did you think I, he was? He was headed. Where did you think? Well, I thought he, they were gonna meet each other. I thought mm-hmm. that was gonna happen. I thought. I think, and they kind of touch. Like it's a, it's a, it's such a smart movie mm-hmm. because it, you think it's this leading to this romantic movie, and I love romantic comedies, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I, and that's another great thing about watching. A movie from someone else's culture. I, I memorize like every plot of every movie because I've seen almost every movie yeah. in America. So I know what's going to happen. That's why I love romantic comedies. It's the same plot, but you know it's, but you still love it. This mm-hmm. one, you thought, I'm like, okay, this, they're going to meet. It's still entertaining, but they're going to they're going to meet and see they're perfect for each other or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but that didn't happen. But they kind of touched upon the whole metaphor of. 
um, the train, you know, uh, you, the wrong train. Lead, oh, yeah. I forget what. Yeah, I think it's it's like you, uh, the wrong train can lead you in the right direction or something like that. Yeah. And so, and I kind of was talking about how the food went to the wrong place, but mm-hmm. it kind of led them to a whole new like friendship. But I also think they learned something towards the end where like he learned his like kind of he's aging you know he's Mm -hmm. old he's he's older than he he realizes and that he needs to kind of accept that instead of fighting Mm -hmm. it that his life is but then it also at the end when he sees the guy on the train he's like i'm i'm not that old (laughs) yeah so it's it was kind of it was kind of like a yeah yeah, he did he did he was looking at him looking at his hands and so he might have changed his mind Mm -hmm. what do you what do you think happened I mean, I loved, I mean, there's the romantic, the romantic side of me that wants to think that he gets to the door, right, is there about to leave for Bhutan, her and her daughter is about to leave for Bhutan, and they see each other, and they have a moment, and on a whim, they, they, you know, get on the train and, and go, you know, and I, and to me, like, that's even where my story ends for them, because I'm going, like, I don't want to think about, like, is is it feasible because he says all the reasons why it might not be you know as as he feels like he's slowly like entering his grave you know Mm -hmm. um which i also thought was just done so beautifully as well just the guy offering him his seat on the train like all those tiny moments that are the insidious things that creep in all of us so yeah like him watching her in the cafe was so heartbreaking i Hate loved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it, but I feel the same way. I wanted to end. I wanted it to end the exact same way. And it's it's like it's okay if it doesn't work out because they got their shot at at yep. seeing if it would. We actually saw another uh, romantic comedy not that long ago, which actually is like the closest thing to a like a really grounded romantic comedy I've seen in the second. Which Love was, actually. It's Love Actually. <laughs> Love Actually. No, gotcha. it's, called, uh, it's this movie called Juliet Naked, which uh, Ethan Hawke stars in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they sort of have a moment like that where there are these two, you, they probably will not work out. Like, you have no idea if they work or not, these two main characters that mm-hmm. fall for each other. But you end with that moment of them seeing each other, and maybe there's a possibility. Like, may, maybe there's that moment of okay do they find a way to make this work uh but i love i kind of love that it's just so beautiful to, to fall in love with someone through their words and just through feeling seen and food it, and food yeah. and food and uh was there anything culturally you didn't understand in this film like was there something that confused you though? Uh, there's things that surprised us i actually didn't a questions about but there was mm-hmm. nothing like we we were we were fascinated by the idea of somebody coming and getting everyone's lunch bag. Yeah. Like bringing after it, they've yeah. left for work, bringing yep. it to work and then bringing it home. Like the husband doesn't doesn't even bring it home. Yeah. yeah. And they're, really, they're real. Think there's a whole like culture around that, or like you know. Yeah, they're 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 a real thing. Um, they uh, and what they said in the thing like a Harvard. Um, professor or a group came and studied them and they'd literally never mess up they're the most reliable delivery service in the world wow. um it's so that, it's it's pretty that's ass. so wild the fact that i don't know if you already knew is that they call anybody older than uncle or auntie or i think i i think i knew that before okay. but i love i love that it feels uh so uh like familial yeah in a that one of my favorite characters in the entire film is actually the one you never see is Auntie, uh, her upstairs neighbor. I love that. that just the too. basket coming yeah. down. <laughs> just like as it like bounces. Actually, that's a really beautiful story. When when uh, she writes to him about the ceiling fan. Yep. It's so simple. I love that story so much. And yeah. she said she cleaned it without turning it off. Yeah, that's so, I love that. Like she managed to somehow clean the fan without turning it off. And it's like the highlight of her day. Yeah. Was there anything in this that was culturally you didn't understand? Not didn't understand, didn't know. I yeah. Mean, uh, just the whole, the whole plot around the, 
the lunch boxes was really neat. Like, I mean, we don't have that really here. No, those are okay. those are real people oh, yes. in in Mumbai that that actually do this. Basically, how like they husband and wife, it's they don't show affection a lot of times, especially in public. Yeah. Uh, they don't do I that. Kind of that about about the culture a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I also thought it was just because they're dynamic was seen yeah a little, their dynamic was definitely different because uh, like when you see uh the the weasel assistant guy yeah. uh, with his with his wife they seemed like mm -hmm. you know like a love well even though they weren't married yet but they they mm -hmm. just it was a very different contrast compared to her and her husband mm -hmm. but um yeah so i kind of knew that the other thing was the whole like I really thought for a minute until towards the end that she was talking to her real aunt the entire time. Oh, gotcha. But that's just what they call older. Yes. Basically, uh, anybody that's auntie. older than you that's not your grandparent is called auntie or uncle if it's if it's a man. He was, they were calling him uncle on the on the train. Uncle, you can sit here. Um, I just love it. I love I love how. Uh, I wish I wish that um, more Western audiences had the patience yeah. for for this kind. Of, I th weirdly, I think they do. I think they're just not shown it because executives or producers are are not, um, you know, they're very risk adverse. <laughs> yeah, and feel like it's risky to like, oh well, get to the action, get to the thing, you know, get yep. to the love story immediately. We need the meet cute now. You yeah. Know? Just faster like, like yeah, there's exactly. like so much air around everything they do yeah. mm -hmm. that's where the beauty is and i even think of like um daniel was on the set in uh, in italy and i went to visit him mm -hmm. and the director would cut like as soon as the last line was done and i was in video village and i was like oh, i wish they had just like let that go a little bit yeah because that that's where the fun is you know that's yeah. where like the magic can kind of happen is yeah. in those like you can tell that like there were probably moments that Irfan, like that they found with Irfan, where it was not scripted. It was just him reacting very, you know, calmly in the moment. And like, just every time he would get a letter in the cafeteria and look around, like every single time, it, like the simplicity of that, but the kind of how he knows it's a running thing that yeah. goes. It's it's such a. I feel like actors at that age and at that experience level have this really beautiful way of just being present and being themselves in the moment, but yeah. also have like a bird's eye view of all the pieces around them and knowing how to fit in to the larger picture. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, would y'all be interested in watching more Indian cinema? I've told After, you, please, yeah. send me, please send me yeah. as much as you like, because I'm always looking for any cinema that is not of these parts yeah. like there's a film called <laughs> there's actually a film we just watched it's a malayalam film it's called the great indian kitchen if you want to be pissed off <laughs> watch that film oh it will piss you off <laughs> like so bad I, I, it's a fantastic film i'll send it to you um but it's it's one of those what? things just no just coming from a western mindset and yeah. what this woman it's not what happens in all of Kerala or whatever, but this specific region where the men um, and they what they do is very religion based, um, and so it's very traditional. And so what they put this woman through with her, you know, menstrual cycle, what they put her through with cleaning up and and cooking and oh, it's just is, it, the, film, is the film critiquing that or uh -huh. it just kind of like showing it? Oh, it is yeah. critiquing cool. it. Oh, that's but it's cool. it's very delicate. Like it, I think I, I think the film could be a silent film almost because there's just very little dialogue. Um, I'll send it to you. It's a fantastic film, um, but it's one of those that will absolutely make you incredibly <laughs> mad. <laughs> it Great. made me mad. Um, yeah, good anger. <laughs> thank you for uh, letting me know your thoughts. Uh, I'm, I'm sure people will appreciate it. Do you think this is a because I, I did this because I did this with another friend of mine who had never seen at the time another Indian film and he loved it as well. Um, do you think this is a good introduction for a lot of Americans uh, in terms of being introduced to yeah. a different cultures film? Yeah, 100%. I, I think it's, so. It's such a like beautiful. Uh, it's it, it's simple, but it has themes that are universal. Yep. You know, it's a, it's a romance, essentially. And it's I mean, it shouldn't be this way, but it it has a 
feel to it when you first turn it on that it's like a very high budget Hollywood American film, you yep. know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I I'm I feel the same about uh, there's a great Iranian film na- filmmaker named Askar Farhadi who uh, made a film called The Separation in the past and a bunch of stuff and it's all the same right it's like it's it's a completely different culture but the themes are universal and I think that films like this specifically uh, it's it's such a good relay into that because you're it kind of sets you down like a like a feather almost like you're kind of like into the story very softly and I think it's great because then people go like oh I can be patient and the reward is really soul fulfilling in a different way than but it also had enough cultural difference laced in that it made me I I mean I love the thing too but I also like it it made me more curious about Indian culture yeah yeah that we don't understand or know yet so. and this one was a um i, I picked this specifically because i think it is a good segue into it because there's some films that you can watch that will be extremely cultural uh, uh but this one i felt like it was a, a little more of a elegant segue from a western point of view into what indian cinema has to offer and there's a lot of it so i'm glad you guys liked it yeah man thank you so would you be what? interested in watching more indian cinema after this Yes, and I and I did. Like right after, I started looking. Up <laughs> yeah, you're watching one that I've yet to see, so you're gonna have to let me know how it is. I have like a list, kind of, because it, it gave you like what you want to watch. Mm-hmm. You no, know, what similar movies? Um, Photograph. I don't. Did you see Photograph? I have not seen Photograph yet. Same, same director who directed. Yeah, Lots of yeah I, I've same, heard about it. Okay, that looked interesting because it looked like a another romantic kind of movie. Um, so I wanted to watch that, but then I wanted to watch uh, the yeah. And this is just this is this is just Hindi as well. So this is a this is a Hindi film. There's many different other industries, other languages, because as as I've told, I think I've told you before, there's yeah um, a bunch of different languages in India. So there's other industries: Telugu, Tamil, Malayalam, uh, Hindi. Then there's uh, Assamese, Gujarati. Punjabi, uh, I'm, I'm, oh, wow. but yeah, there's there's a bunch of, and they're all industries in the same country that uh, that oh, make wow. f- that make film. So before you watch anything, ask me first in case I have you come on and do another uh, okay. <laughs> do another <laughs> review <laughs> because mm-hmm. I can recommend you stuff, but also I can recommend you to stay away from certain things that yeah, even that we be- didn't understand uh, and I'm, get. I'm really, I'm really getting into. Any medium. After I watch that, I'll, I'll ask you. Did you? Um, I yeah, want to got, watch that Shakespeare one you were telling me about. You don't watch that yet. But I, I'll, I'll, I'll ask. I'll. I know you like Shakespeare, so that's that, yeah. not yet. Irfan's in that one. Um, okay. He is in that one, but yeah. Wait. Is based okay. off of- well, he this this director actually has um, the director of that. His name's Vishal Bardwash. He that Heather is Hamlet. Hamlet, okay. Uh, but he's which also is got my favorite um, Shakespeare. Story. Yeah, he's also got Omkara, which is Othello, and then he's got uh, Macbeth, which is okay. Macbeth. Uh, so he did basically like a trilogy of, of Shakespeare, essentially. But now I get why you got so into it because it's mm. it's well, it it's, just opens up like a whole other culture. And after a while, you get and I love movies, and I still watch the movies that come out, but it's the same movies. Mm-hmm basically over and it gets yeah you know, like so and, like it, it just introduced an entire world to us of exactly. different artists and 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 there's no, it's not all great but a lot of it well, is great well, just like American just movies. just like here we have Dwayne the Rock Johnson movies and then we have you know good movies <laughs> <laughs> so it's the exact I same watch, like you I mean we both grew up watching the base of the same movies and love the same mm-hmm. movies you know every actor you know who's going to show up and mm-hmm. me watching a movie and the only actor I know is play bit parts in, you know, <laughs> Slumdog Millionaire yeah. and, and a Spider-Man movie. Yeah. Um, I, I enjoyed it more cause I'm not, I'm not ju- you know, judging yeah. what I've seen before. You, you don't, you don't know guessing. them yet. Exactly. So yeah. it's, it was like finding out like, I don't know, something new about a, a, a love yep. that I, you know, because I love movies and yeah, was, yeah. It, it just it took me back to like to when movies were 
were simple and not just entertaining. Yeah. And I felt like this took me back to let's just make a movie about people. Yeah. Well, we, is, we we indoctrinated another one, guys. So <laughs> uh, oh, hopefully we'll we'll see you back, Zach, to uh, watch another family. And you're going to have to let me know how Hindi Medium is. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely finish it. Um, I had to watch my movie at like 4 o'clock in the morning because that's what happens when you have kids. They run the house and I have to sneak away to watch my own movie on my phone. <laughs> That sounds wrong. A lot of poop breaks. A lot of poop breaks. Yeah, no, it's it's watching Indian movies. That's that's what it is. Nothing else.